Hey guys, how's it going? It's Coach Red from Paddle Synergy, and today's workout is workout number seven. Today's workout has been brought to you by West Coast Paddle Sports. You can check them out at westcoastpaddlesports.com. And if you order online, they have a really amazing special going on right now. If you put in the, the code in love to sup, you get up to 20% discount on all your purchases. Pretty, pretty amazing. So check them out again at westcoastpaddlesports.com. And again, the code discount code is love to sup. Now, of course, if you don't sup, if you just paddle, they also obviously have other things like outrigger paddles and uh, of the sorts, as well as other um, items for sale, such as other clothing. Another another shout out to another uh, business out there, CaliPaddler.com. I'm rocking my Cali Paddler workout shorts. These are amazing. Yes, they even have the tactical camo on there on there, <laughs> but uh, they're really comfortable. Really, they're they. They fit snug but loose at the same time. I know that sounds weird. It's a paradox. But uh, all in all, I love my Cali Paddler workout shorts. Grab yourself a pair. You go to CaliPaddler.com. Put in the discount code Paddle Synergy and also get a discount as well. That being said, let's go ahead and get on and talk about what we're going to need for the workout today, gang. Today you're going to need, you're obviously going to need a paddle. There's something where I like to start to call what I'm working with some of my clients directly right now. What we do is a lot of things and we call, I call paddle Tai Chi. And I would just call it paddle Tai Chi just because you know, the art of Tai Chi is a very flow and moving um, art. So we're obviously going to be doing a lot of workouts or uh, exercise, some exercises that's going to what I call is paddle Tai Chi and where we're actually working on the movement and the flow and understanding the flow of the workout all having having done after having done um, a specific exercise you're also going to need today now a water bottle now one of the things that I've come to find out that some of the folks that they don't even have dumbbells right I know in this day it's really tough to get some equipment out there um, even through Amazon so um, one of the things is that I use if I don't have dumbbells is I get a water bottle or you know for example not only that but if I have something like this right this is a really great if you can just fill it up you don't even need to fill it up all the way you just put some water on it and where you feel is it gets enough resistance and it'll do just fine right you could get yourself a lot of folks have been doing this on online as well they've been getting you know their laundry detergent or something filling it up uh, bottles etc so find something being creative you still get the move I like to get these uh, particularly like to use these because I always talk about grabbing water well guess what there's already water in there so I'm gonna grab the water right you know and so um, so some of the things that we're going to be doing today is going to be, again, with the movement that's going to be involved. Instead of me using dumbbells for that, I'm going to use my water bottles, okay? Uh, also, what you're going to need, if you don't have one, but if you do have one, I highly encourage getting yourself a stability ball. Um, some of the folks that I actually train as well, they don't have access to an erg. Well, this is the next best thing. So they get on the erg. We're going to be doing an exercise, what I call is the ball erg, right? And we're going to be using our water. So instead of dumbbells, but if, if you have to want, if you really want to use dumbbells, I recommend nothing heavier than three pounds. Um, when it comes down to at least when it comes when you're putting it out to your top arm, using that top hand, um, and then you could get anything between five and ten pounds on the bottom hand. Um, the reason why I don't want anyone to put too much strain, uh, too much weight, is because you're gonna put a lot of strain on that shoulder if, by using this movement, right? And we don't, we're not typically moving uh, or working our shoulders or our muscles when we pick up and we, well, which we are, but we're not putting a lot of tension on there. But because of the weight. You could end up putting yourself a lot of put a little bit of strain in the movement. So I really recommend using a water bottle or very lightweight, maybe even a one pound or two pound. I like to use the three pounds just because, hey, I can. Um, and again, I get the stability ball. Uh, if you do have dumbbells, there's going to be some workouts that we're going to have dumbbells on uh, that I'll be working on as far as what we're going to be doing is rows uh, and so forth. And as well as actually working some squats and some overhead presses. That being said, we're going to go ahead and get started here, okay? Um, again, if you don't have any of these equipment, just try to do your best, okay? Um, trying to, to create this content for you guys, so folks who maybe have a limited access to certain workout uh, equipment. And if you have any any questions or feel that, hey, I, you know, I want to do these exercises, but I don't have this type of equipment, um, what can I do as an alternative? Please post it on the comments below, and I'll definitely try to get back to you as soon as I can. And please, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it does definitely makes a huge help um, in so many ways, and it really keeps me keeps me going, right? It's uh, kind of my, hey, 
quid pro quo. You subscribe, I keep throwing content your way. All right. So that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with a four-minute warm-up. Go ahead and start running in place. Okay. All right. So we're just going to run in place. We're gonna always going to work out. We're always going to work out. We're, when we're going to do the workout, we're going to always do a four-minute warm-up. All right. Just to get the body moving. At the end of the workout, too, we're also going to do about a two to three minute cool down. Okay. And at the same time, what I recommend, obviously, I'm only going to do one round. So I recommend doing this workout twice. Okay. Or go to workout six, workout five. Try that out. Right. Try to intermix between the workouts. Um, definitely will help at least keep our bodies moving. Right. When I do these workouts, I do this with the mindset of, hey, I'm on a stand up paddle board. I'm on an outrigger canoe. I'm on a surf ski. I'm on a dragon boat and I'm competing. Right. And I'm at the point to where my body is just about ready to give up. What do I do? Right. I got to go back into my mind because my muscles are inherently stupid. So I go back and use my mind, get back into my mind, get back to my technique, get back to my form. And the muscles realize, oh, yeah, I'm not in charge. OK, let's go ahead and do jumping jacks. You know, it's funny, you know, they always say a lot of folks that have had the opportunity to, to get coached or go out and get coached by um, those phenomenal paddlers out at Tahiti, and they always say that us westernized power, or us western paddlers, we think too much. Well, I think, and that is, is another, in a sense, a misunderstanding in language, is that we don't think too much, we try too hard. Right? And when you try too hard, you don't think at all. So, one of the things that I coach with my, my powers is use your mind, your muscle will follow. What happens after 30 seconds of any type of exertion? Your body starts to break down. Go ahead and relax. Okay, we're just going to go to drop lunges. You got to get ahead of that. You know, when you start feeling that lactic acid build up, you're feeling all that tension, that's your time to relax. That's your body telling you, hey, I need air, I need oxygen, right? So when you put your mind into the movement and you put your mind into the work, your muscles will follow, right? When we become sweaty tryhards, even though our intentions are good, we end up getting diminishing returns in the, in the, in the long run, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna go side to side. Uh, opening up those hips. All right. No, oh, excuse me. That's the pre-workout kicking in. All right. Okay, you're going to get into a squat position. You're going to get down. You're going to sit down. And when you squat, squat, I really want you to think about tucking in your hips. Okay, putting the load on your glutes, not on your knees. And what we're going to do is we're going to squat pulse. <sighs> you really want to feel it right there on that lower glute and those hamstrings. If you're feeling it on your knees, that means you're putting all that pressure on, the, on there. Try to think about bringing in your hips, bringing out your hips back. Okay, so that way you're engaging those hamstrings and those glutes. All right. In the last exercise, we're going to get down we're going to do push-ups in three, two, one, go. So I know I just kind of forgot to do the countdown on these warm-ups, but just follow through as best you can. Okay, our first exercise we're going to do, you're going to get up on your feet, go ahead and relax. You're going to grab your paddle. And we're going to do what I call paddle tai chi, okay? So every workout's going to be 30 seconds Three, on, 30 two, seconds off, or 15 one, seconds on, 30 seconds go. on. Here we go. First, we're out of 30 seconds. What I want you to think about is getting your feet just right now, shoulder width apart. I know a lot of folks like to keep their forefoot forward, but or their back foot. Just keep your things shoulder width apart right now. And I want you to think about your flow. Training the muscles to understand the movement instead of, oops, Instead of just going at it and just feeling tension, right? Coach Johnny Puakea from Puakea Designs One. put out a really, let's go ahead and relax, put out a really great video uh, about relaxing the shoulders, right? Or when, how we, how we approach the stroke 
and there's already Three, tension there. Well, two, here there's no tension. One, here we're just go. getting our arms out. Now, when you feel, you feel a stretch, right? You feel your body when your hands are out in front of you. Understanding that. Notice how my top arm is straight. Now I'm going to be doing another video about this top arm. A lot of folks like to do this. Ah, you can see how the movement changes. How everything just breaks. Whereas I get my arms out, I lock the joints, I relax the joints. I lock them at the point of me when after I set, and that's me really just establishing stability Three, and putting two, my big muscles behind one, rest. the stroke, i.e. putting my body behind the shaft before I put it on top. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do a transition exercise. We're going to go ahead and do drop lunges, okay? Drop lunges will be like so, okay? So Three, again, 30 seconds on, two, then 15 one, seconds off, go. 30 seconds on, we do a transition and then we move on to the next exercise. After we do this transition exercise, we're gonna get right onto the stability ball. Now, if you don't have a stability ball, excuse me, you can get on a chair, a bench, something where you can get on the edge of. Really recommend though, if you have a stability ball, get the stability ball. Three, two. Okay, I'm gonna grab my water, okay? So, heavier is going to be this one here, and the lighter one will be on the bottom. Now, if you don't have water, grab your Three, dumbbells. Okay? Two, one. And we're going to do is go. we're going to do the ball erg. Okay. So I'm going to grab and relax. Now, notice how I rotate with my upper back. What I'm thinking about is this top arm and my top lat is going to meet that opposite glute, that opposite hip, where my bottom hand is at. Notice how my shoulders come up and then they relax, they square up back to my hips. What I'm not doing is what a lot of pilots tend to do is still kind of, uh, okay? Three, I'm using my two, upper back. One, rest. Okay, I'm gonna switch sides. Really recommend getting one of these for that bottom hand and learning how to grab. Notice how my pinkies are not sticking out. I don't have, kids. you can't, see? You can't stick out your pinkies. One. <laughs> Go. I hate pinkies. I hate when I see pinkies. Why? Go try to do a pull up with a pinky sticking out or try to do a push up with your pinky sticking out or try to do anything with just four fingers. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, three fingers. And notice how my wrist relax as well as my three. shoulders. Because I want to use my wrist one. as well. Rest. I don't want to be all tight. Ugh. Okay. All right. Next exercise we're going to do is we're going to get down on the ground. You're going to do flutter kicks. Okay. Six inches off the ground, and you're going to just flutter kick. We're getting that core. Three. Okay. Two. One. Go. Now, if you want to add a little bit more complexity, you could kind of tap those knees, opposite knee, get a little bit of an upper back rotation. <sighs> Or you could just stay here. Either way. Now make sure you're at six inches, not six feet or three feet, six inches. Okay? Three, two. Okay, one. we're gonna go back to paddle tai chi. Okay, grab your paddle. This time you're gonna be on one leg. Okay, one leg. All right? So if you're a sub paddler, this will be really good for you. Three. Working that balance. Two, now, one, go. What I like to call <laughs> is that I'm working the anti huli muscles. Okay. <sighs> working that grab. Now, right now, I don't have stability because I don't have any water to leverage, to get leverage. So, oh boy, I'm using my core, I'm using my glutes, I'm using my obliques. And I'm using my body, getting my body behind the shaft, then on top of it. I'm not driving down. If I try Three, to drive down, two, I'm going to fall on my one, face. Rest. Okay? The act of leaning forward is the act of me sending the blade into the water. There is no artificial false positive of me just making it hard up front just because I want. To, I feel that it need to. Three, it's going to get hard two, no matter what. One, go. <sighs> Might as well do it smartly, right? So you set and go. When you set that blade and you get that catch, it's like you putting the you're, you're casting a reel, casting a hook out into the water, and fishing a fish are biting, right? You're not gonna start pulling in and ranking it in. You're gonna wait for that bite. That's why you gotta set and be relaxed. Wait, yeah, 
and then come back up. Right? You gotta be set, you gotta Three, feel that bite, and then two, go. Right? One. Okay. Rest. Next exercise we're gonna do is drop lunges. Okay? Drop lunges. Again, this is just about building an understanding of what our bodies Three, are doing. Two, the stroke is such a complex one, movement. Go. You know, I, I work with a lot of paddlers, and a lot of times they bemoan their coaches. And, oh, my coach tells me this, tells me that. You know, and it's just a lot of times they don't. And when it comes to team sports, they don't have a lot of time. They've got to deal with upwards up to 60, if not more people at a time. And they've got to get everybody on the same sheet of music as best as they possibly can with the short amount of time that they have. So as a paddler, as an individual paddler, it's up to Three, you at that point two, to take ownership one, of what it is that rest. you're doing, right? So that being said, let's go ahead and grab your dumbbells. What are you going to do next is you're going to lean forward. Drop the hands. Notice as I come, as I lean, I'm going to drop Three, the hands, two, and then I'm going to come up and one, squeeze. Go. So I'm going to lunge, drop the hands, and come up. It's like what I'm doing with my hands right now. I'm feeling the weight. You'll feel weight. You're still, I'm still holding on right now. It's 10 pounds, right? But you feel the difference here versus here. You feel more of the weight up front here versus here. Well, why? How is the perceived rate of effort changing when the weight is obviously the same. Well, same thing when you put Three, the blade in the water. Your two, bottom hand one, should feel rest. the same way, right? Now, I could artificially make it harder all the way through, but why? I've already done the work, right? I've brought the weight here, and now I just want to bring it back. Three, okay? two, so one. You're going to feel tension here because of why you feel that grab, and then you've done the work. And once you feel the grab, you've done the work. Now you put your body, now you're using your weight as leverage, as the means that you're transferring from weight to muscle. Now, there's two things that I tell my paddlers that they could use to make a boat move. One is muscle, and the other is weight. Well, what's the constant in a long race that never, ever changes? Three. Two, and what's one that always one, gets tired? Rest. Muscle gets tired, weight stays the same. So let's leverage, let's use our muscle when we can, but most of the time let's leverage our weight to help mitigate fatigue. Okay, next exercise, transition exercise we're going to do is Three, jumping jacks. Two, one, go. Now this workout is not entirely that hard today. Again, it's just a matter of getting, coming back to basics or understanding the movement. As I was saying earlier about a coach's situation in a team setup, he or she only has so much time to get everybody's timing on point, to at least get people to not focus on what other people are doing or not doing. So Three, as individual paddlers, two, one, rest. we gotta take responsibility to make sure we don't injure ourselves. Okay, the next exercise you're gonna do, you're gonna grab you're gonna grab your weight or your bottle of water, right? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna Three, you're gonna have your hand two, you're gonna have this hand out front. One, I'm sorry, this, and you're gonna bring it back. Or actually, we're gonna do this. Sorry. So you're gonna grab a weight and you're gonna make the rainbow. Make the rainbow. Okay. When you make that rainbow, I want you want you to think about here, here. Feel that lat. <sighs> I apologize if I'm a little spit a little. I just got done doing the. 45 minute workout at a class, so my adrenaline is all up. Three, I'm running two, right now. Uh, one, rest. Again, so you're gonna switch legs, so it's gonna be, you're gonna bring that opposite lat to that opposite glute. You're gonna feel that lat and that glute at the same time. Okay, make the rainbow. Three, two, okay, this is just a big exaggerated one, motion. Go. But I want you, there is something to be said about this. What we're doing is we're using our upper back to rotate. What I'm not doing too is I'm not dropping down. I'm controlling it, right? Whew. Control. A lot of paddlers like to do is they like to collapse down into themselves when they're crushing the baby. What I call it's called it crush the baby. You don't want to crush the baby. Maybe there's a imagine Three, there's a baby that two, here one. and you just want to make sure he or she doesn't fall. Okay? Next exercise, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do mountain climbers. So you're going to get in high plank position. Three, two, one. And we're just going to get go. Gonna pump those feet. Pump those feet. Three, 
So again, we're talking about knowing when to relax in competition. You've used Three, your muscle. Two. Now one, you've got to use your rest. weight. You've got to transfer from muscle to weight. If you use muscle all the way through that stroke, you're just going to get tired quicker, and then you've got no muscle left. Then you just got weight, and then you're just dead weight, right? You've got to have that. Be able to understand that transition Three, between muscle and weight. Two. Okay. One, Here we go. Paddle Tai Chi. Go. Both legs forward. Okay. Feeling that flow. Feeling that flow. Again, thing about here, what we're going to do in the next paddle tag chi is just using the top hand. We'll see how that works for everybody, okay? But I want you to look at, let's look at my shoulders. Watch my shoulders. Get my body behind the shaft, and then I get my body to just bring myself to that two, spot to where I put the blade, one, right? Rest. Using my body, using my hips. This was the boat here. Boom, look at that. That's where the boat or the sup or the watercraft goes, right? So we'll go ahead and switch sides. Three, two, so what I'm also doing is one, I'm not squatting two. down. I'm shooting my hips back, right? I'm tucking my hips in back like so, okay? And again, I'm putting my glutes at work, okay? Whew. Yeah, I don't want you to squat down. You don't want to put that pressure on your knees. You don't want any kind of downward motion. The act of going forward, leaning forward to set the blade, it's all the downward motion that you need in respects to driving that or putting that blade in that water and bringing the boat in forward. One, you don't want to put rest. the boat down. We want to put the boat this way, right? Okay, next exercise. We're going to do squat jumps. <sighs> Three, two, here we one, go. Go. So imagine you're on thin ice, and if you go too hard, you drive down too hard, you sink. You don't go hard enough, you don't move, or you sink. You got to keep your boat moving forward, right? So just enough effort to make the boat move forward. Or not, you could continue on being sweaty tryhards, especially if you're my competition. <laughs> Three, two, one, rest. All right. Okay. Next exercise you're going to do is you're going to grab your dumbbells. Okay. You're going to grab one dumbbell. You're going to keep that dumbbell here fixed, and you're going to bring Three, that two, other dumbbell one, over. Go. <sighs> Now, when you feel your leg working, this is what that leg drive is, right? What I'm not doing is I'm not doing what a lot of, I would say a lot of paddlers do, kicking myself up. Well, what happens when I kick myself up? I got to spend a whole lot of time Three, two, coming back to one, that, right? So rest. I know I'm probably going to make a lot of people upset. Don't kick the boat. You're just, that's too much movement. And you break that motion. You break that flow. And then you got to make up for it in the back. Well, if you're my competition, Three, keep kicking the boat. Two. <laughs> One, go. Learning how to feel the transfer of weight as it goes forward and bracing, right? You brace and then you come back. You brace and then you relax. Whew. Whew. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing this cyclic motion here with that top arm, doing still making a rainbow. What I do is I want to I want to get that opposite lat engaged at the same time meeting that glute here. As I go forward, I'm feeling my right side glute activate. Three. Two, and I'm working that lat one, at the same time. Rest. Okay, next exercise. We're going to do is I call nine to threes. So what you're going to do is you're going to get down into a squat position. You're going to point that foot, your toes, to three o'clock or nine o'clock. Three. Nine o'clock, opening two, up those hips, keeping one, yourself here. Now, you should go. feel it in your inner thigh and in your outer hip. This is a great exercise to do prior to any, any kind of workout. I mean, I'm sorry, any kind of paddle, right? If you're going to go out and do a race, if you don't warm up and you're my competition, good, don't warm up. <laughs> but really recommend that you warm up because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you, your body's going to warm up anyway, but you're already warmed up Three, one mile two, into the race. Well, that's one mile one, you just gave your competition. Rest. Allow your body to get yourself 
ready to go. Okay, next exercise. You're gonna get back on your stability ball. You're gonna grab your weight. You're gonna have one leg open. I'm sorry, one leg up. Three. And we're gonna press. Two. Now, when you press, I really want you to really stretch out those lats. Get those lats engaged. Think about like those those weights are gonna pull you off the seat, and you're keeping this one leg up the whole time. Woo. Now try to kick the boat. <laughs> or kick the boat with a foot that's two, supposed to stabilize you, right? One, rest. Notice how when this foot is up, this one foot here is bracing, right? That's what that forward foot's doing. So a lot of the dragon boat paddlers out there, you keep kicking the boat, great. Your weight's coming right back into the seat, right? I'm going to demonstrate what happens two, when I kick the boat. One, go. Uh, so I'm pressing down with that. <laughs> it's hard to do, but I'm pressing down. If I kick, I slip, right? So here, no, I'm just going to brace, and I'm going to try to keep my weight from coming back down into the seat. It's probably a poor example. Don't do that at home, gang. Three, <laughs> I'm doing two, everything to not to fall off one, the stability ball. Rest. All right. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead in one leg. You're going to go one leg out. You're going to balance yourself out. You're going to stretch out those lats and kick Three, out this leg. Two. It's going to be the last one, exercise right here. Go. <sighs> oh boy. Let's go ahead and switch legs. Really stretch out those arms. Really stretch out those arms. And relax. Bring both feet together. Get those arms out. Three, Get those tuck of those hips in. Two, one, rest. Hold there. Hold there. Hold here. Keep holding it. Just think about getting your arms out. Stretch out those arms. Feel those lats. Feel those delts. Feel those glutes. Keep those arms out. Three, Ugh. two, one. Cool all right cool all right so that's the workout that's round one okay so i know it was a lot a lot of me talking again this was more so about understanding the movements a lot of the some of the workouts that i'll be doing probably every five or six workouts into it will be more about let's get let's not worry about getting our heart rate up let's worry about understanding our movements so I hope at least, man, I still got to work out in just doing one round. So click the link below, do it again for another round, or recommend going and do another round for like, go do workout number three, okay, uh, or workout four, or any other workout, right? And do it once, come back, do that, do the cool down for that, and then we'll go from there. Otherwise, I recommend coming back to the cool down here because we're going to do some paddle tai chi. Okay, go ahead, guys. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, I hope you had a good workout on that round two, whether you did the same workout again or if you went and did another workout from previous workouts before. Uh, this cool down here, you're going to need your paddle. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to do it again. We're doing some paddle tai chi. Okay, first exercise we're going to do is we're just going to do one side. I want to, and we're going to switch. Again. Obviously awkward. What I want you to work on is your for you outrigger paddlers, for you sup paddlers, <laughs> just not necessarily your dragon boat paddlers. But this is good just so that way we feel what it is that we're doing when we switch sides. You're coming up, one stroke, pick up, one stroke, pick up, one stroke, pick up. Okay, we're gonna do this for another ten more seconds or ten more strokes. Two, four, six, eight, and.
and 10. Okay, so now next cool down exercise, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have, you're just gonna use your top hand, okay? Now, what I want you to do is you're gonna have your elbow broke like so, okay? And then as you go forward, I want you to set it, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to bring, so think about your hand right now, use that, make sure you're using that opposing thumb, that you're using this hand, it's roughly, if you're on the right side, right hand, it's either two o'clock, or depending on what you're facing, it's gonna be my two o'clock, okay? So I'm gonna go two o'clock, 12 o'clock, okay? And I'm coming back up. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, really make sure in this exercise, in this drill, and you get that arm out, okay? Get that lat engaged, feel the lat engaged. That is a precursor, that's letting your body know what's gonna happen. If you load, that's what I talk about, grabbing with your lats versus grabbing with your arms. You keep grabbing with your arms, good. When I walk by you, I'll say, ha, ha. lats, bro. <laughs> All right, go ahead, switch. And getting yourself out there, right? Now, a lot of paddlers have really long arms, so they don't necessarily have to get a full extension. They can just still get their arms out in front of them and still have a little bit of a bend, right? Well, don't follow somebody that isn't physically the same as you. Right? I'm not going to look at, say, Danny Ching or Johnny Puake or Travis Grant because I don't have the same physical makeup. I'm not, I don't got long arms. I wasn't gifted with long arms. So I'm going to do, I'm going to try to find someone that I can emulate. Like Jim Fody. Well, Jim Fody's got really, he's got really Popeye forearms. So anyway, <laughs> someone, maybe someone that's around my threshold or, or very least look at what they're doing and see what, your limitations are, right? You've got to take into account that just because they do it or some awesome team does it this way, how does it work for you physically, right? Can you do it? If you can, great. If not, figure it out. Okay, next one, what you're going to do is you're going to still get that top arm. You're going to come here and you're going to bring it to your hip. See, there's no bottom hand here. There's no pull here. See, this is why I'm saying you don't need that bottom hand. Bring it to the hip. But notice how my top arm is engaged. Notice how my shoulders are relaxed. Now I'm putting a lot of, there's some grip strength obviously involved. That's why we need that bottom hand. But you can bring that shaft to your hip without having to pull with that bottom hand. In fact, that bottom hand is just to help right now. If you feel it on the forearm, that's what the bottom hand's there. It's to help stabilize. And when we talk about top hand pressure, and you can focus on top hand pressure, go ahead and switch the sides versus having to just hold on. Okay, again, you're bringing that, you're making the rainbow, getting your hip, and bringing it perpendicular. Oop, I messed up there. Set, hip. Set, hip. Set, hip. Set, hip. Ha, huh. set, hip. Set, hip, set, hip. Okay, now you're gonna do your bottom hand. Just your bottom hand, all right? And I want you to watch my T handle, right? So I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna set. Pick up, set. Huh, where's that T handle going? Where's that T handle going? It's making a rainbow, right? Why? Because I'm relaxed. I'm picking it up. I'm bringing my hands out. I'm not tense. Then I'm grab, I grab a lock here, right? Whew. Okay. It's learning how to just relax your grip after you've done the work. Once you've grabbed, then you shift muscle, then here. So I'm going to do a video this week about how paddling, you should approach, approach paddling like you're boxing versus approaching paddling like you're doing deadlifts. <laughs> or lifting weights. Okay, let's switch sides. Why? Because in boxing, you got to do 12 rounds, 12 very long rounds, and you've got to conserve your energy, and you need to know where to put power when power is required is when you hit, right? Now, you try to do lifting weights, you get 12 reps instead of 12 rounds. 12 reps to failure, right? That's when we work out. When we lift weights, we lift to failure. Don't paddle to, to failure. Paddle like you're fighting someone in the ring, more or less. Paddle like you're obviously more or less fighting yourself to not get yourself in a situation where you become a detriment to your own self or to your team because you're fatigued, right? Learning how to manage yourself. <sighs> okay, and relax. Okay, now we're going to put it all together, gang. 
last set right here, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, what I want you to do is when you pick up, let your elbows and your, your, your elbows and your wrists relax. Let the team handle guide the top hand, grab, and then at one set, in that one situation where the point after you set it, you just kind of grab tightly like you're punching something and then you relax, okay? If you can do this movement without having water, you know, involved or any kind of resistance, you're training your muscles, the movement in itself. You're training yourself good muscle memory. Now, I, I would hazard a guess that a lot of folks are doing this, right? If you feel that this disconnect here, or they're pulling with this bottom hand, or this top hand, or they're or they're doing this, there's a, that's a break in the movement, right? And that means there's there's something wrong there. If you have any questions about that, please send them my way. I'd love to do a video. You know, I've, I've done videos personally for for folks time and time again when they ask me a question. Put them through. Send me a video of yourself. Do it. You know, I could do and send you my thoughts. You could take it for what it is. If you could throw it out the door, either way, I'm just here to help. All right. A couple more times and relax. Okay, guys, that's our cool down. I know this workout wasn't really that much, but I got a little bit of a sweat in, and I hope you did too, okay? And really, again, guys, it's about understanding the movement, right? Take, be scholars. Like Coach Johnny says, do your homework, right? Not only just do your homework, what he meant by that, understanding how the movements apply to you physically, right? Do you have any physical limitations? Like I've knew pallers that couldn't give me the, all that full body sit-up because they've got uh, infused L2, L3, right? Okay, well, we figure that out. What can they do in that situation, right, without putting any undue strain on themselves? At the same time, you know, if you're feeling shoulder issues, maybe your blade's too long, or maybe you're doing something too much. Figuring it out and understanding the motions, understanding the, the movements that are involved will get you a better idea to self-diagnose when it comes time to when you get on the competition, when you get out there and you work out, or you get there and you, you compete against your friends out there on the water, you're going to be that much better in a position of health and at the same time, you know, enjoy your pal. I'm done being miserable when it came to paddling. You know, and me means that I, I tried too hard, or as our Tahitian friends say, I thought too much. I put too much thought into it. Well, I wasn't really thinking at all. I was just trying too hard. So put some thought into it. So therefore, at some point or another, you don't even have to think about it at all, right? Just like when a baby drops a bottle. You ever see a baby drop a bottle? And then have to pick it up. <laughs> right? And then they just kind of pop. All right, mission accomplished. If something drops now, I don't even have to think about it. I just pick it up, right? So same concept, guys. This is a very complex movement. Take the time to understand how it applies to you. Have any questions, please bring them to me. Post your comments on below and hope to hear from you guys. And then please like and subscribe to the channel. And one last thing again, check out westcoastpalsports.com. Love the supper, 20% discount. All right, guys, have a great day and be safe.